friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tammy Ernest for those of you who are new and I am a long arm quilter and here on my channel I like to share customer finishes as well as my own personal projects. This week is a little different. Um, when I filmed my video last week I realized it was extremely long and too long for one episode so I actually split it into two. So if you've not seen that video you'll want to go back and watch my personal sewing projects that I posted last week. The video this week is all about the customer quilts that I finished and so I'm just doing a little introduction here and then I will go on to uh, the, the second half of the video from last week. So I hope you enjoy the customer finishes, beautiful quilts that were sent in to be quilted and then I will see you next week for more updates on my personal sewing as well as additional customer finishes. So here, enjoy the video. We start into some customer quilts and we will start right up here at the top. So the first quilt today comes from Ellen, and this is the 2021 Designer Mystery Quilt from Fat Quarter Shop. This is done in all fig tree fabrics. This is actually the strawberry and rhubarb line that Joanna had, and so, so pretty. So you can see the, um, the strawberries on some of the prints, and in different colorways, you have the green and you have uh, the red, the, Oh, it's kind of a peachy color there. Um, so the strawberries and the flowers, just so, so pretty. You've got all different, you got the darker red, then you have the lighter peachy color, and then you have um, the lighter mint green. So strawberries and rhubarb, very, very pretty. So the designer mystery quilts, what they do is they have uh, different 12 different designers each design a block and so each month you receive uh, the block and if you do the pattern with the fabrics that you need for that month so then you create the block for that month you don't know the setting until the very end but you're creating the 12 different blocks one for each of the months and each block is created by a different designer so then the final setting instructions for this was done by Jocelyn of the Fat Quarter Shop and you notice in the um, the pattern, so the, the row across the top looks just like this. You're creating, uh, these are all the setting blocks. So you have the 12 blocks. Um, how can I show you this? <laughs> so this first row across the top, the two blocks that you can see across the top are the setting blocks that were made. And then the next block down, you can see in that second row, that's one of the blocks from the designer mystery. And see how the 12 blocks that were created by each of the designers fits in with the other blocks that were done for the setting instructions. So you are making 20 of those other blocks. They all look exactly the same but the colorways have changed. So in this one we have the inner um, I guess you want to say arrow pointing in is the darker red with the lighter mint above it and then on this one it's the mint then with the darker red above it and let's go on around the quilt and so then it swaps again with the red and then the final one is the green so you're swapping those back and forth through the quilt you're alternating rows and then in between that you're doing the 12 blocks by the by each of the designers very very pretty so this quilt ends up measuring 66 by 84 and this uses all of the fig tree fabrics that were called for. Here is the backing fabric. The large floral is very, very pretty. And again, this is part of that strawberry and rhubarb line from Fig Tree. So the 2021 Designer Mystery Quilt. Pantograph. So for this one, I chose a Julie Hurt pantograph. This is called Cartwheels. So this one alternates um, two flowers. They 
well, I'm basically they're the same flower, just one is turned and then so they nestle inside each other. So if you, you have one flower that is straight on, four petals, and then the next one's set on point, I guess you wanna say, and um, then it alternates back and forth. Now, when you bring this into your design, I close up that gap really tight. And so I like my lines to be really close together and um, really it stitches out this way. So you're gonna see a little bit of a gap, not that this comes down and touches the row underneath it like it does in the horizontal line, but I like it to be really close, to be you know pretty close together. So we, I wanted to show you something. So in choosing thread for this one, I originally had pulled out the a cream color. I thought it might look pretty on this one. And so I actually did the basting line across the top, and I don't know if you can get in close enough to see that, but I actually did the basting line across the top in the cream. And then I'm like, eh, I don't really like that color it makes it look a little dirty so then my first basting down the two sides so I base the across the top first and then I what's ever in my throat space then I base the two sides I always base the quilt all the way um, as I rotate it so I'll base down the top and then I'll base the sides as far as I can go I'll stitch out what I can in that throat space and then I'll rotate the quilt again and then baste the sides again. So when I did that initial basting across the top, I did the cream color thread and I wasn't thrilled. I thought it made it look a little dirty, like the thread was a little dirty or something. It was just that little darker. So then what I did is I did a white for my basting stitch down the side. And so then I could look at it and I, yes, I like the white compared to the cream, but I could have gone back and said, no, I'd like the cream better. But that was a way to audition the threads Besides just um, laying them across the, the quilt, I could actually stitch it out and to see which one I liked better. So just a little hint there. I mean, you're gonna lose those basting stitches in your, um, in your binding anyway. You're not gonna see it. So you could try different colors in your basting and see which one you actually like on the quilt. Um, you know, you can audition them by laying them on top, but really until you stitch it, it's, I, I think it's uh, still, um, not set in concrete, I guess, you know, that, that um, you really get a better feel for it when you actually see it um, on the quilt, stitched on the quilt. So that's a good way to, to try it, is to stitch it in your basting and um, see which color you like better. So I did end up going with the white, thought it looked a lot nicer, made it a real, just kept it clean. It just looked a little dirty with the cream color thread. So I like Julie Hurt's designs. She's got very, um, what I, very tight designs, um, a lot of texture in her designs, some floral prints. Actually, I think I've got quite a few of her um, designs. She has an Etsy shop, so you can look it up on there. And I really am enjoying her, um, her pantographs that she does. All right, so that's Ellen's first quilt, and her next one is right behind me, and I will show that to you next. Ellen's second quilt this week is called Sunny Patches and if you are familiar this was a Cory Yoder 2023 quilt along and it was really interesting because uh, Cory Yoder ran this a little differently than normal not normal she ran this a little differently than other quilt alongs she actually gave you the setting instructions first so what she had you do was create these they're really um, large half square triangle blocks. So you have the strips here, then joined with this um, white half square triangle. So you can see that right there. And then she had you set those, and then what was a mystery was the center block for each one. So a really neat quilt along. So the fabrics used in this quilt are all sun washed fabric line. This is also by Corey Yoder. Very playful, fun, springy colors, lots of flowers, little bumblebees, little sprigs, little um, 
little dots. It's just a very, very pretty, fun line. And then the backing fabric is also a sun-washed print. It's, an, again, a large floral, but uh, this one different from the last one, which had the red back with the white printed on top of it. This is the white with the white background with the colors on top. So a large floral, very pretty, all the same colors as the top. This whole line goes together. So for the pantograph for this one, we actually chose another Julie Hurt uh, pantograph. This is called 60s Mod Butterfly. And um, just a fun, a fun pantograph. This one actually, for those of you who are digital long arm quilters, this actually stitches out sideways. So what I mean by that is it stitches, you can see the long line with the butterflies um, wings going above and below that. So your line stitches out, you do the wings, and then it goes uh, horizontal again, and then does the wings and horizontal. So this quilt itself is square, 79 by 79. Um, so it doesn't really matter which way I loaded it. It was going to look the same either either way. But if you are doing a quilt that you want the butterflies to run um, down, you know, you want it to look like this where that line is going down, then you'll just need to make sure you orient your quilt that way. You'll need to set it horizontally and let it stitch out so that, um, so that you get those butterflies running down. Um, so a really fun design to use. Again, I used white thread on this one. Uh, a lot of the background fabrics were the white again, and the backing fabric is also the white, the white um, back to the white. Uh, the background of the backing <laughs> is white. So uh, we used all white thread on this. I did have somebody ask me if I would tell what batting is used on each one of these. So in my quilting studio, I carry Quilters Dream Batting. You are welcome to send your own batting along if you prefer. It does save you on shipping costs if you buy your batting straight from me. Um, just that way you don't have as heavy of a box. But you can send your favorite batting that you like, and I'll use those as well. But I carry Quilter's Dream Batting. I carry both 80-20 and 100% cotton. So for Ellen's quilt, she chose 80-20. So this is 80-20 Quilter's Dream Batting. And I use the Select Loft. So Quilter's Dream has four lofts, I want to say, in their cotton, and Select is kind of the medium one. There's a Request Loft that's their thinnest one. Um, then there's two above that, above the Select, two um, thicker lofts above the Select one, but I carry the, the Select one. And this is Natural. Um, Quilters Dream Natural. So they do carry, they have a white and they also have a natural. Their batting is so clean that you don't have any of those holes or little debris in the cotton uh, at all. And so even with a quilt like this that has white on the front and white on the back, there are no little dark things that you can see through. They ha Their batting is so clean. I have used, I think it's cleaned up a lot in the last several years but there were companies that I would use the the natural batting and you would have little bits of stuff in it and if you were doing a white quilt like this you would see those little bits come through. Um, Quilters Dream Natural is their natural color is fine for white quilts. It does not dim it, it does not have any dark spots that are going to show through. Um, but they they also carry white. You can get it in white as All well. Right. So that is Ellen's second quilt. And I do have a third quilt by Ellen, but before I go to that, I want to show you another Sunny Patches quilt that I had in the studio this week. So no, you're not seeing double. There are actually two of these. So you can see the one I just showed you I have on the back of my chair right here. This one was on the ladder and I pulled it down. So this one is Dawn's quilt. Exact same pattern, exact same fabrics, um, exact same wonderful stitching just like Ellen's was. The backing fabric is also the same. 
very, very pretty. So this was done in 2023, this quilt along was, and so that's why I'm starting to get uh, some of these in as uh, quilters are finishing them up. Very, very pretty. Now this one we chose a little bit different pantograph, and actually you've already seen this one as well. So this is Julie Hertz uh, Cartwheels one again. The alternating flowers, one that's straight and then one that's set on point. We used the white thread on this one. So, so pretty. So similar to the to the, blutter, the butterfly one, you have the same kind of um, shape there, but just a tad bit different. Very pretty. So let's look at, this one actually had 100% cotton batting in it. And you're going to ask, what's the difference? So the Select, I use Select Loft in both of them. So the Loft is the same. With 100% cotton, you're going to have a little more shrinkage than you do in 80-20 because you have the 20% polyester. In the 80-20, you're going to have a little less shrinkage, um, a little less um, creasing and things if it's folded up. But with the 100% cotton, you're going to get that um, crinkly look when you, when you wash it for the first time. And just gives that um, wonderful feel of um, <laughs> the older quilts that, that has that look. Um, so a lot of people only want to go with uh, the natural fibers of the cotton. Um, Quilters Dream batting their 80-20 is still a superb product as well. I love working with both of them. They're both clean. Um, they both are super soft. I just love the feel of them and um, just just wonderful to work with. I really, really enjoy it. So um, beautiful quilts, beautifully done. Very, very nice. So that was Dawn's. I have a second quilt by Dawn and I'll pull that down and show that one to you. Dawn's second quilt, the pattern is called Stairway to Heaven, and that is a Leela Boutique pattern. This uses a jelly roll, so two and a half inch strips. And the pattern says you need one jelly roll, which would be 40 strips um, of coordinating prints if you want, if, or you could create your own. You could cut your own uh, two and a half inch strips from your stash, however you would like to do that. You also need two fat quarters and that is for extra block prints. And then you need three and an eighth yards of this background fabric, which you can see um, you have the square here, and then you also have the strips in between the jelly rolls. So you're creating a block like this with a square in that part, and then you have a shorter jelly roll strips here and then longer strips there. And by alternating that as it goes up the pattern, you're creating this stairway very cute, very pretty, very springy, all the floral prints. She said the fabrics from this were scraps of Sugar Sack 2, which is a Whistler Studio print, and also Cheeky by Urban Chicks. I was not able to find links for those, so you may have to search um, Etsy or your local quilt store and ask them if they have that available, if you like these certain, these, um, if you like the prints that you see here. Very pretty. The white is just a solid white, so you could use um, a Bella solid or uh, anything like that. You could use a, um, a low volume print as well if you wanted to, or like a white on white, something like that would be very pretty. The backing fabric, I love this. She chose this red, this red gingham check. It's so pretty. Doesn't that remind you of a picnic? so so pretty love that love the richness of the red again used a white thread um, and I know it probably sound like a broken record but that white thread blends with that white backing background fabric anything else was going to take away I would think from that you know somebody might like to use a pink or something like that I kind of like my threads to blend in not stand up on on top but um, 
So you can see the pantograph design. This is again a Julie Hurt pantograph. This is called No Fuss Orange Peel. Actually gonna have this on a couple quilts today too. And I am really enjoying this um, pantograph. So Orange Peel is one of those that is a tricky pantograph to stitch out. Um, it takes some practice because it is a precise lining up of one row to the next. And if you look, not every part is absolutely perfect, but that's part of quilting. Even with a machine quilt, you are not gonna get it absolutely perfect. When you are stitching out a pantograph um, and you rotate the ro rotate your quilt to the next one, um, as you are stitching out, uh, especially if you do a denser design, it draws in those fabrics, okay? So when you rotate the quilt to the next area, the part that's unquilted is gonna be a little bigger, you know, and the part that's already quilted is going to be already pulled in some. So when you're lining up a pantograph, it can be very tricky because the center may look like it's lined up correctly, but then the farther you get away from the center, it may not be, you know, exactly perfect. You're going to have to play with it on your machine to see um, where exactly to line it up. I know on mine where, where it says my needle is and where my, um, where it shows it on my screen is not exactly right. So I have learned over time um, how to, where to line my quilt up at. One, and a trick that I use is I um, will set the, um, what is that called? I'll set the horizontal line where it can't move. I, I can't think of the name right now. Um, but you can set on the on the computer, you can set it either the horizontal line where where your machine is locked in there. Uh, I can't think of it. Anyway, where your machine is locked into that horizontal line. So a lot of times what I'll do is I will set, um, I'll go to the middle of the quilt and I will set my needle, not my needle down, I'm just kind of lining it up where I want it, you know, say at the bottom of the row uh, that I just stitched out and I will set that horizontal and then I will move my um, machine down the quilt, not stitching at this point, all I'm doing is lining up and I will move my machine down the quilt and I will, so I'll come over here and I want um, the quilt to be right there. I want that design to line up right where my needle is because I know that's on the horizontal line with the middle. I don't know if I'm making any sense here at all. A lot of times as you get farther away from the middle, um, that design will be down a little bit. And a trick that I use is I use um, batting scraps and I will tuck behind the bars at the back so that it pulls that quilt up to where I want it. And I'll have batting scraps all the way along there so that I get each one of those points to line up exactly where I want it to. Now, again, at the sides, because it draws the quilt in a little bit as you quilt, the farther you get away from the center, if you look real close, you're gonna see that not all those orange peels line up perfectly. And I'm sure there's long arm quilters out there that do get it perfect. Um, mine's close, <laughs> and the more I do, the better I get, but just because of the nature of quilting, it's not gonna line up perfectly. And I think we need to accept that. I um, Even with a computer, we're doing very precise work and 99% of it is gonna be perfect, but you're gonna have those times that we're still humans and lining it up is um, is still gonna be, you know, part of that human um, element of quilting. And I think we just need to enjoy that and, and not get super picky about it. Um, Obviously you need a good work done and, I, um, and I'm and i giving them that, but um, also understand there is just that human element that we don't get it perfect every time. So I am learning with my machine where to line it up. It's always better to give it a little more space rather than to overlap one row to the next because that's very noticeable. If my orange peel from one would come up and overlap the row above it, you're gonna see that right away. But um, if I leave, even you know an eighth of an inch of a gap um, then that's not going to be as noticeable in the design and um, maybe I'm just being really picky I don't know but you know when you look at the overall design you could go through and find mistakes I'm sure you know we all do that to our own um, quilts 
you do it when you're piecing quilts. I have people bring it to me all the time. Oh, don't look at my piecing. I, you know, I messed up here. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not judging your piecing at all. Um, and I kind of do that with my quilting is I'm looking at every point going, oh, I missed that point just, you know, this much. Oh, I missed this point by this much. Overall, um, that's not noticeable. But if you're doing your own long arm quilting, you know how, how precise, especially an orange peel design has to be. Um, and some of those trickier ones we just stay away from because it's hard to do. And, um, but I'm enjoying this one more and more. As I do more of them, I'm learning my machine better. I'm learning um, my own just, um, you just got to do it. It's seat time is what, you know, if you're a farmer and you understand that, the more you're in the tractor, the more, the better you get. And the, the straighter line you can do, and I guess that's kind of an old thing because now they use GPS satellite and they go but there's still a human element in that as well so um, practice practice learn with your machine um, especially on some of these tighter designs you may need to practice on a separate um, piece of you know just scrap yardage for a while if you need to but it is fun once you can get those down and, and work on them so this orange peel can be adjusted to different sizes so you're going to see on another quilt that I did it I actually did it a pretty a larger one than I did. Try to scale your design to the blocks that you have um, or the the type of quilting that you like. If you like a really dense quilting you can make the tighter. This one I would say is probably probably about a three inch um, orange peel there and that went well with these blocks. It created enough um, design in the white open spaces without overpowering um, uh, on this one, I didn't feel we needed to go super, super dense. Um, I just felt like with the larger lines here, you know, the two and a half inch squares, I don't like to do exactly a two and a half inch orange peel because I don't want to try to fit within that line. And then if it's off, you're going to notice it. I try to make it either a little bigger than, you know, if I've got straight lines like this, I like to try to either make the design a little bigger um, so that it overlaps different lines or a little smaller so again so that you have that overlapping and not try to match the exact size of the of the strips in a quilt that you have so again this is white thread it blends with that backing I may have already said that um, just very pretty great way to use a jelly roll if you have a jelly roll you're wanting to use very nice all right let's move on to the next quilt This one is absolutely gorgeous. So this is Lori Holt's hometown quilt. Um, this was done by Shelley. This is all applique houses. They are absolutely adorable, absolutely adorable. This was a quilt along that Lori Holt did um, last September. And this is the first one of these that I have done and oh, I just wanna keep it. I just wanna keep it. So um, there is a quilt kit available on Fat Quarter Shop. It does include the pattern, or you can go to Lori Holt's blog and look up the hometown quilt along. You can do it with your own fabrics. She gives all the directions. You can print off, print off the sew along guide there. Um, the only thing you would need to buy to do this would be the sew simple shapes. So Lori creates all of her um, applique by doing, um, using her sew simple shapes and the, the interfacing. Um, and you can go to her blog to look at all of that. I love her applique, but my hands don't always like to do it anymore. <laughs> Some of these pieces are very small, but what I love about the applique is that she is able to get all different shapes and sizes of houses. So a lot of the house quilts we do, it's the same house over and over and over. You can do it in different colors and it's a huge, a lot of fun. Um, but with this applique, you can create all of these different houses and I think this is so, so pretty. So um, I may just have to go through each one of these blocks because each one is unique. 
The fabrics in this are all the hometown fabrics. They are beautiful and I love the different colorways of all the different houses. All the details she has put into each one of the different houses is just beautiful. So let's just start at the top of the quilt. So there are rows of pieced blocks. These are smaller. They look probably about five inch blocks. All of these pieced ones, you have them um, in several rows. So interspersed. So you have three rows of houses, four in each. So you have a total of 12 house blocks. And then in between each one of those rows, you have pieced blocks. Again, like I said, about five inches. I've not done measurements on any of this. Um, and then you have sashing between each of the different houses. That's really pretty too. This is all of the called for fabrics. So if you buy the kit, these are the fabrics you're going to get and um, very, very nice. So Shelly has done on all of her house prints, she has done um, machine applique. She has matched the color thread to the um, shape that she was going around. So let's go through these blocks because they are just absolutely gorgeous. So this one right here, you can see the teacup on top of the house with the little flowers. Look how tiny those are. The little um, flowers on top, the, the teacup even has a little tea bag over the edge. It's just absolutely, uh, just adorable. So the, the blue house, you have the pink door and I love the four windows. Isn't that so pretty? The four windows, you have the little lean-tos on either side of the house. Uh, just love it. And then the bright sunshine right there. This block has its um, green. I love the green trees around it. You can see this one poking out from behind the lean-to on this house. The blue bird on top, isn't he adorable? His little yellow legs. Love the chimney. Again, I love the four windows. I am a window person. I drive by houses and I say, oh, yeah, they should have spent more money and put bigger windows on that house. It's just one of my pet peeves. I've, We have lived our entire life um, We've lived our entire married life, married life in old houses. So our first house was actually in town on um, US 36, main drag right through town. Um, but we lived in an, an old Italianate house. We had huge windows. I love the huge windows. When we moved to our farmhouse 23 years ago, again, I love the big windows. So don't skimp on your windows when you're putting in a house. <laughs> um, so again, I just love windows on the house. And the little bushes, I mean, she's not lost any details. The houses are so pretty and so different from each other. Look at this pink house, this topiaries, plants on either side. You've got the what is that called? The cupola around the top? Is that what you call that? I don't even know. I'm sure you'll tell me. Um, just adorable. I love the tall house compared to the other ones that were maybe a little more cottage style. Just love it. Love the whole detail. The pots and the circle topiaries there. Then look at this beehive house. This is so cute. <laughs> so the house is brown with the green. You got the little bumblebee on the top, but look at this little bee skip here with the flower coming out of the top. It's so, so cute. I, do, I love the four windows again. I'm gonna keep saying that, but um, each house is a different color, which is so fun. The details, again, um, just so pretty. So then you have another row of piece blocks and then I'll just work my myself back the other direction. So then we have another pink one, two chimneys on this one, the flower pots with the sunflowers now, and then the big tall door entryway. So, so pretty, all the pinks, big tall house. Then next to that one, here's a green one. Again, we have a couple lean-tos on either side. Love this one because it's got these candy, uh, they almost remind me of um, like mints or something at Christmas time, but they're done in different colors. The background, so this is a circle, okay? And um, I assume it's created, you make a pinwheel block and then you're using the So Simple shape to uh, cut the circle. The background fabric, the white fabric in the circle is the same as the background fabric, so it just blends right in. Very cute, they just look like candies floating in the air. The flag house, this big tall flagpole with the, the flag on there and another pot with the flower. Blue house, the moon is out on this one. The two chimneys. Ah, 
Look, there's even like a little, the little door stoop right there is so, so pretty. Lori's details to the houses just make them extra, extra special. Love all of that. This is the eighth house. This one has cherries on it, and this one even has a little picket fence. How cute is that? Um, again, the tree sticking out up over the lean-to. We just have one little chimney. Is, even the chimneys are different. They're not the same on all the houses. Um, you know, like a little smokestack type cottage chimney on this one, where this one has big, tall, square ones, and then others have had more of a cap on them. Each one is different. Then we have another row of piece blocks and almost done here. We'll go down to the final row down at the bottom and then we have a strawberries. The strawberry house, look how tall that strawberry plant is all the way up over the house. The um, roof on this one, are they all scalloped roofs? No. This one has like a scalloped roof on it, the overhang. So pretty. Then this one, the big tulip blocks it looks like, or maybe those are lilies, I don't know. Yellow roof. So a brown house. We have the pretty pink flower. Love the little um, bush in front of the house. Two chimneys on this one with the red roof. And then, what is that, where you say that's a pineapple? Pineapple meaning hospitality. And the last one, isn't this, this is why I had to show you the details of each one of them because they're all so cute. We have what looks like an evergreen tree on this one and then on top of the roof, we have this sheep <laughs> sitting on top of the house. Very cute. And look at the details on this one. We have some like flower box ledges on the windows here. We have the transium above the, above the doorway. Lori's details. Very, very pretty. Love this quilt, Shelly. It's just, it was a joy to work on. So this one is also, I did the, um, the No Fuss um, Orange Peel. Did I say that right the last time? I might have said Lemon Peel. <laughs> this is a, a No Fuss Orange Peel. It's the Julie Hurt design. Now you can tell on this one, I created this one bigger. This quilt, because of all of the applique, it's um, a little thicker. We don't wanna go super dense on this one, unless you were doing custom quilting or something that would really accentuate all of those um, appliques and you could really um, you know, do the quilting for that. Because this was, um, I wanted to make this pantograph a little bigger. So this is bigger than the one I just showed you. These are probably six inch orange peels on there. We did use a cream color thread on this and a lot of um, Lori's, uh, the back ground color of hers is not a stark white. It's a little bit more of a cream color. So the cream color, you know, blends well with these colors. You've got a lot of color in the quilt. Uh, so the cream worked really well. And Shelly used the cheater cloth on the back, and this is part of the reason why I chose the, the orange peel design, because the cheater cloth on the back is the orange peel. And that was really my inspiration in choosing it for this one. Just thought, um, can't beat them, we'll join them, right? And so just created that same orange peel. This is really pretty. She added a little bit of extra yardage around the, ex around the edges, and that cheater print in the middle. So pretty, I love this quilt. Let me tell you the size of this one. This quilt finishes 75 by 84. It feels much bigger than that, uh, just because it feels like it's a little extra heavy weighted just because of all of the applique, super, super cute. There are some buttons and things that go on this. I do not um, quilt around buttons. I cannot have quilt buttons on your quilt top when I do the long arm quilting. You can insert those or add those to the quilt top later if you're gonna add buttons to it, but I know the quilt kit itself, there are some additional buttons you can buy to go um, to make some additional embellishments on that quilt top would be really cute. All right, I think we still have all of these quilts right here. Um, so we're not done yet.
Okay, I showed you two of Ellen's quilts earlier. This is a third one that I had from her this week. This is the Phoenix pattern. This is done by GE Designs. If you know GE Designs very well, they use um, she uses a lot of stripology rulers, and this pattern says that the um, Stripology XL ruler by Creative Grids works really well for this quilt. Ellen's quilt is all is done in all flannels, and the flannels are the Fall Fantasy flannel from Moda that was designed by Holly Taylor. Very pretty in the um, blues and greens. A lot of prints there, a lot of paisley and swirls, some leaves in there too. They're really pretty. The backing fabric, Ellen used the same fabric on the back. She did a pieced backing. She even included a label that she um, has from that as well. Very nice, very nicely done. A piece backing is, is always fun. So the pattern itself, um, let me see, it says it uses either yardage or fat quarters and you can make it, the pattern includes three different sizes, a lap, a full, and a king size. Ellen's quilt was the um, lap size, so about 56 by 80 was what her quilt top was. So, um, Love the design in this. So uh, kind of a mirror design from one side to the other. You've got the darks and then uh, mirrored on the other side with the lights. Um, all done in greens and blues. A very neat design. A very neat design. And the flannels feel really nice. It feels like a, a masculine quilt with the flannels and the colorway. Um, and then the design of this one just lends itself very well to a, a masculine quilt. For the pantograph for this one, we chose one that's called Paisley Playtime. My inspiration for offering this one to Ellen was because there are a lot of Paisley prints in the, the fabrics on this one, and I just thought it looked really well. So Paisley, it's um, got the Paisley um, loop that you have, but then it also adds a little bit more um, around that. Um, so you've got the, the original Paisley loop like this, but then she, it's got some... What I want to say, almost like a flower motif around the paisley. So you got that paisley playtime is what it's called. So again, added some of that same dimension from the paisleys, but without being overly floral or overly feminine. I think it was a nice touch. Kind of softened the quilt up a little bit, but again, without going too floral. Um, um, but not so stark as like if you did a, uh, a leaf print or something, which was going to keep it the same... Um, just a little harsher, I guess I want to say. So the Paisley Playtime, it kind of uh, mimicked the same Paisley, but added a little softness. I did use a light gray thread on this one. The gray, again, just blends with these colors very well. Um, because the design and the fabrics are very prominent in this one, the quilting just needs to, to stay in the background. If I'd used a cream or a white, it would have stood out a lot more, and I don't think there was any reason to do that on this quilt. So a very nice, um, a nice one. Love the feel of the flannels. Very nicely done. This is Sharon's quilt, and Sharon says she made this for her grandson, and this is all of his favorite interests. So each one of the blocks is a churn dash block, and then she has chosen fabrics that show some of the things that he enjoys. So there's everything from fishing to outdoors things to sports. Um, there's hockey on this one. Um, golf on this one isn't that fun. <laughs> there are um, your sports prints and candy corn and uh, his favorite sports team it looks like so each one of the blocks is different each one has those novelty prints that you could use up this is a great way to use those up and not show all of their interests and and likes then she has set each one of the churn dash blocks off with sashing so we have a, a triple sashing between the gray and the white and then really fun right here in the as the cornerstone then she has um, this nine patch right here and it uh, coordinates with the um, with the sashing 
Very, very neat. Love that. Love that effect. It makes it very interesting to look at. So the gray looks like um, almost like a Moda grunge or something like that. I don't have prints on it or fabric lines um, information on that, but you can kind of see that gray print in the border as well. The white is not a solid white. It actually has some little gray, almost looks like rain like drops on the ground. Um, just all different sizes of little white or little um, silvery grayish little bubbles on there. Very pretty. Done a really nice job. Really, He is going to be thrilled to get this. The backing fabric we chose a blue. I picked this out for Sharon. She sent it without a backing fabric so I chose this blue. Was not able to find a gray or anything that matched perfectly with the front so instead of trying um, to do that I just went with a blue on the back. So again, it's a little bit of a mottled blue color, but very, very pretty. Love that. For the pantograph, this um, is a newer design. I've had this for a while, but I really don't know that I have used it on a quilt that I have shown here. This is called Doubles. So similar in a lot of ways to the diagonal plaid that I've used on quilts. I love that one. It's kind of a, a square and a square set on point, but the... Um, um, the edges of it are rounded and this one is similar to the edges are rounded here but instead of being a square and a square we actually have like two rectangles next to each other and they alternate back and forth they kind of nestle in together so I thought this was a nice fun print it kind of changed up um, the diagonal where a churn dash has a lot of the straight lines you know boxy but you have a little bit of the the diagonal because of the half square triangles there so kind of playing off that a little bit this is set on point so all of these little blocks um, uh, alternate back and forth still kind of a playful print but not in a, more of a masculine playful this would work well on t-shirt quilts I think as well um, the size on this is probably about a three or four inch little square. Again, you can make those as big or as small as you want to when you're using the digital design. This thread is the um, a gray thread again. That was just a good choice with the gray here, as well as the dark background. The gray really works well on that. You can see it pretty well on the back. But the gray is a nice color um, with this quilt top just to keep it more masculine um, to um, even on the white threads you can see the gray but it just goes with the whole tone of the quilt <clears throat> we're on some of the white quilts we don't want the quilting to stand out on those white parts we want it to kind of blend in this one there's enough busyness going on with all the different um, designs and the novelty fabrics the the quilting just goes right along with it very nice. This one measured 70 by 84, so this would be a nice size for her grandson. All right, I have one more quilt to show you today. one today this is Debbie's and this is a wall hanging um, and so a panel print in the middle the big peacock and then she has added a few borders around the edge so the panel actually comes out to the edge of this iridescent print that you see right here she has added a skinny black border right here and then she has um, added this strip here this was fussy cut from the fabric line I don't have the name of the fabric line if you know this I appreciate you putting it in the comments I don't have that information but so she has fussy cut that and then added that as her borders on this one so so pretty and then the backing fabric is again the um, a peacock feather the golds the blues the purples very rich feel to this and I was absolutely thrilled with the way this quilting came out. So this is the iCat Pantograph. Looks very much like a um, 
a peacock. To me, it kind of um, looks like a peacock feather with the eye in the middle there. This one I did very, very small. Um, so the, uh, the eye cat itself, it's you know only probably three inches tall. I've never done it that small on a quilt before. This being a wall hanging, I felt that um, it needed to be that small. If we'd made it much bigger, it really wouldn't have done anything for the quilt. It would have just, you know, kept it together. You'd hung it on the wall. This, by adding this iCat pantograph in that dimension, it added super amount of texture to this, especially on this dark black background. The thread that we used was a gray. Um, and I like the gray because it kept it, it gave it a little hint of color. Um, but if I would have gone with a gold or something, I think it would, you would have lost the richness in the colors that she had. By doing gray, you can see it very well on the black. Um, and this was the dark, a dark gray even at that. It's not even the medium or the light. It was a darker gray. Um, but even on that black fabric, it still shows up really well. And by doing it this dense, it just, it almost gave the feel of custom quilting without being custom quilting. Um, a panel like this would have been very neat done. I do not do any custom quilting. I only do edge to edge designs, but I think this is about as close as you can get to custom. Um, doing it this dense was just absolutely beautiful in my opinion. I think it just added so, so much to this quilt. Um, it does make it a little stiff to do it that tight, but this is a wall hanging anyway. This isn't something that's gonna be on somebody's bed. They're not going to be covering up with it where it feels real stiff by the wall hanging that you're going to have hanging on a wall i think it just adds to the the crispness of it and um, the design of it i just i was really 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 happy with the way this this turned out and uh, that icap pantograph just complements the whole feel of the quilt um, the whole look of the quilt and um, just was absolutely thrilled with this one and the way it turned out all right, so that's all. That's enough for today, huh? I've kept you a very long time. So thanks for joining me today. If you are in need of long arm quilting services, my information is down below. I'd love to be a help to you. And I hope you're making lots of time to quilt because every quilt is worth finishing. And we'll see you back here next week.